the equilibrium that you illustrate that that I perceive that you illustrate between like uh, evil that grabs versus long term democracy that plays a long term game, right? Strategy versus tactics. To me, that's a that's a difference of short term versus long term, right? Democracy is playing the longest term game at the cost of short term uh, clarity. Like what what is democracy's next moves? I mean, that's a little bit more foggy. Um, but in, you know, with dictatorships and with evil, like the next step is obvious. Like you said, it, it, it grabs Good and there's idea. like a, there's a, uh, an equilibrium there that, that settles between these two forces that doesn't allow one to really ever trump the other, right? Like as democracy looks into the longest of terms, it creates room for evil to, uh, execute some tactics. Uh, and, and so, yeah, I mean, you are such an advocate for human rights, of course, but like, what what do you think in the fullness of time that goal actually looks like? Can you know democracy, quote unquote, win? Right? Can we actually stamp out evil, or is evil something that we are just destined to live with until the end of time? Like, where, where how do we how do we discover a more suitable equilibrium between these two things? Look, uh, as I said, evil doesn't die, so we know evil always comes back because because it's human nature. You have you know good and evil, so. Um, I think what is very important for us to actually to identify is this this absolute evil, and because uh, um, there's no absolute good. So I'm a big fan of Lord of the Rings and and generally fantasy books. And Lord of the Rings is is, is a great story where you have absolute evil, but on the good side you have many quarreling factions. You know, in the normal circumstances they don't like each other. Sometimes they will fight each other. Yeah, elves or dwarves, for instance. So, and even the humans, you know, they, they, they have tons of, you know, disagreements. But facing absolute evil, you know, they, 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 had, to get, they had to unite. And the same is, 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 is in this world. So, yeah, we, we will have tons of disagreements. And there will be, you know, various forms of evils. But right now we're facing ultimate challenge. Vladimir Putin, Ayatollah. So this is the, the, the axis of evil that is... Not just that exists somewhere, it has been actively threatening our way of life. And we have to fight back. Days we will not go to see any peace in Ukraine or in the Middle East before the regime change in Moscow and Tehran. And it says that's again, it's 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 going back to the to the to the thirties and the forties. And it's not, you know, it's not accidental that Roosevelt and Churchill back in, in January 1943 just went again. It's, it's it was not an easy moment. I just remind you that 1943, the Battle of Stalingrad was not yet over. It was January. It ended in the beginning of February. The German, the Wehrmacht stood on the banks of Volga all the way to the, to the shores of the Atlantic. Japan was still running strong and Italy was still in the war. And they said unconditional surrender. That's, you know, that's leadership. Unconditional surrender. Because they knew that with facing absolute evil, we have to act. So, and, you know, they understood that you had to deal with Stalin, which was also... Terrible evil, but at that time, we had no other choice. So then it was another, again, history doesn't end. Hitler was gone, then we had Stalin, we had Soviet, the communism threat. But again, it's just one challenge at a time. Today, unlike in the 40s, the free world has overwhelming advantage economically, you know, in, in innovation, uh, uh, politically, militarily. And what we're missing, political will and also vision of the future and recognition that, you know, there's, there are values. There are values that, you know, you cannot compromise with. Uh, and we always, we have not, not real leadership, but more like a managers. So this is people that are not willing to take responsibility for the future. That's the, those are great leaders of the past. They made big decisions and nobody knew whether decisions would be whether right or wrong. But, you know, I, 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 um, in 2015, I, um, I uh, had a speech in, in, in Berlin. It's for Aspen, Aspen Germany. Aspen Institute in Germany. And uh, I titled the speech Four Words. So the idea was that, you know, it's saying very little, you know, the leader, true leader can change the world. And of course, first thing people remember about Four Words is it's uh, infamous Neville Chamberlain's uh, back, uh, coming back from, uh, from um, Munich, uh, Munich uh, 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 deal with Hitler. So saying peace for all time. That's bad news. But we had other things. Tear down this wall. That's Ronald Reagan. Or JF Kennedy, Ich bin ein Berliner. So those are, and kind of anecdotal, that's the uh, Truman response to the Pentagon's um, uh, uh, mm, uh, analysis that West Berlin cannot be de defend defended back in 1948 when Stalin blockaded the city. 
So we shall stay, period. So it's, it, those were the signs of, of leadership. And again, this is Harry Truman faced Joseph Stalin. JFK faced, uh, I mean, Soviet Union in 1962, 63, is, is, is uh, trust me, much more formidable enemy than, than, than uh, 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 Putin's, Putin's army today. And uh, Ronald Reagan, again, still faced the Soviet Union, called it evil empire. So they was a sign of leadership because these great leaders believed in values. This is important. Yeah, I, I, uh, I watched uh, many times, actually, I watched, I loved it. It's uh, the first televised debate between Kennedy and Nixon. I mean, even set aside the fact that it was very civilized, you know, president, vice president, senator. You know what's the most striking about this debate back in 1960? It was debate. Debate was about means, not about ends. So this is that's the they they agreed. Yes, they they knew America was there. They 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 similar vision about the future. Very different means how we should get there. But today we live in a world where just you know people in America or in Europe debate them debate the ends. So this is we we don't we we still questioning despite obvious facts that the free world offers better conditions. As I said, you know, just look at at, at, at even healthcare. I look at many other things that, you know, where we easily beat the competition on the other side. But we still don't recognize that it's how, how you know, valuable is the freedom because so many things we take for granted. You know, I always, you know, just argue with some friends here. So say, look, guys, you know, you're right, pointing out at, at, at social ills in America. Yes, you have police brutality, but it's a problem in America. I come from the world, I grew up in the world, where it, it was and still is a system. So, so we just have to recognize that, you know, the, the free world offers phenomenal opportunities for individuals. And um, again, I, I think that the future is, is it's to revealing this more potential of human creativity, uh, human uh, resolve that is, is yet being um, untapped. I think part of the, the challenge with all of this, Gary, is like um, there's not consensus on what evil is anymore, at least in, in some of the culture. And I, I want to ask you, you, you've used the term evil and you've talked about absolute evil. And I think you'll find uh, many bankless listeners will find common cause with um, you, you, you bringing Lord of the Rings in, into the picture. I'm sure that we have many fans, many, many readers of those books. And in Lord of the Rings... The depiction of evil is this lidless eye on a tower that was constantly surveilling everything. So, you know, glo this world of uh, complete global surveillance and this world of dominance where the darkness would kind of spread out from Mordor and, you know, conquer the kingdoms of elves and the kingdoms of men and dwarves, like sort of one by one. And then you had the, the free lands of Middle Earth kind of trying to resist this. And so I, I, I'm wondering, is that what you mean when you say evil? Is that your depiction? Is it this idea of authoritarianism? And of course, there are many different blends of, of good, let's call it, but, uh, and they look different, but it is, is um, good freedom, essentially. Is it the free peoples of Earth? How, how do you see evil? How do you define it? No, it's the, uh, yeah, it's, it's a very good description of, 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 the, of this, um, of this uh, um, uh, Lord of the Rings. Thank you. Uh, I am uh, a fan, Gary. I yeah, love yeah, Lord yeah. of the Rings. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I can tell you that it's, it's, it's um, <laughs> nearly 30 years ago. So I was asked on Russian radio just after the collapse of the Soviet Union. And the book was literally unknown. And uh, they had a special program, you know, that said it's, the, it's, the, it's in 30 minutes. You had to, to tell to the teenagers something about the book. <laughs> and I picked up all the drinks. I had to, in 30 minutes, I should, I should explain. And actually, this is the, uh, you know, and 30 years ago, I had to come up with, you know, one idea. Just, you know, what's the main idea? And I said, I used the idea as absolute power corrupts absolutely. Mm. For me, it was more about the, the, the drink, the drink of power. So this is, it's the, it's uh -huh. no one can resist. Even the good cannot resist, can, can't resist absolute power. So that's, that's the idea that I, I presented. So that's, that's, that's the, and again, of course, the coalition, but, but again, even this coalition that, that fought absolute evil had to destroy the weapon of evil because absolute power is, is, is so, so absolute evil. power is the central evil in, in, in it's the world. Ab ab absolute power. You know, this is, if you have absolute power, that's, that's uncontrolled. Yes. It, 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 that's what we, that's what I believe. You know, it um, it always you know serves the evil at the end. That because its absolute power means that you know it will infringe our freedom. So I'm I'm a great believer in individual freedom. So that's why anything that stands on the way of us, you know, of our self-expression, of our ability to live our lives according to our beliefs, 
and live in a world where you know we all equal before the law. So that's 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 freedom. And absolute power somehow will will always conflict things that I've described. To continue leveling up your crypto game, then you need to get on the Bankless newsletter. It's the world's most popular crypto email and is completely free. Just click below to sign up.